Hi, it's Bridget here. I'm one of the Pilates instructors for SilverFit. And today we're going to do a session and um, using some equipment. So uh, either if you have got a resistance band, you can use that, okay? But if you haven't, uh, grab a tea towel and a dressing gown cord, okay? And I'm going to use these today, okay? Just uh, so that I can demonstrate it with those items. So uh, you can pop them down to one side. So we're going to start off uh, with the feet just a little bit wider than hip width apart and soften your knees and spread your wings and just present your chest forwards and as you exhale grab the air, scoop those abdominals, imagine you're hugging a massive beach ball, this is your exhale and then as you inhale press yourself up, nice big inhale and as you exhale scoop your abs, grabbing that beach ball and repeat and I'll do it from another angle inhale exhale inhale reaching up throw your arms behind you up and over and then we'll do that again throw the arms behind you up and over and keep the arms overhead so imagine you're holding on to an overhead bar so really get that nice stretch and then you're going to dive up and over like you're diving into a swimming pool and maybe you roll quite low down or maybe not. And then rolling up, vertebra by vertebra. And repeat. Now I've got a nice chunk of wall here. So quite a nice uh, way to do this is to lean against the wall. Okay, so we're rolling down, vertebra by vertebra. And then you're rolling up and vertebra by vertebra. So you can take your time with this. Okay, and then we're going to roll down again and we're going to hold. So we're in a forwards fold position. Okay, so forwards fold position. And you're just going to cradle your opposite elbow and have a sway from side to side. You can keep a nice generous bend in the knee. And then place your fingertips on the floor. Now, if your knees are in good condition, um, do this. And if they're not, probably don't. OK, we're going to take a little crouch. OK, and if you want to, you can have a rock forwards and backwards. So it depends on your knees. It depends on your feet and other joints, uh, whether this is acceptable to you. You don't want to work through pain. OK, and then we're jacking the hips up. We're rolling back up again vertebra by vertebra. You can walk your hands up your thighs. And then when you get to the top, just interlace your hands behind you. And if you can't, don't worry, just zap into your fingertips. But we're going to stretch out the chest. So nice stretch, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then just let the arms go floppy. And shake them out, shake them out, shake them out. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to have quite a wide stance here and we're placing our hands on our hips and we're going to go for a side lunge, side to side. Now be careful with this, try to avoid that where your knees just go in way over. So get a good wide stance, as wide as you can manage and then we'll just go for a nice side to side. Don't, you don't want to feel any pain doing this. Try and activate your bum muscles, try and activate your core muscles. Okay, and then we're coming back to centre. I'm just going to heel toe my feet in a little bit and then we're spreading our wings and you're going to take a reach over to one side, flipping the palm and then over to the other side, flipping the palm. So the hand that you're leading with, the palm flips up. So you've got this sort of spiral effect through your wingspan across the back. Okay, and we're reaching, we're holding over in one direction and the other arm circles one two three and change direction opening out the chest stretching the pecs for three you can bend your elbow if you want to two and you can look at your hand if you want to one okay recenter and then over to the other side circling the outer arm for one two three and then change for three two and one, good, swirl and whirl your arms back, heel toe your feet back. The feet are now just a bit wider than hip width apart 
and you're going to inhale and as you exhale tighten your belt so we'll, we'll just do this action to get that sort of tightening across the waistline and then release and now we're going to do our zips up. So again, you can just use your um, hands to assist. One hand in front, one hand behind, and we're just zipping up, zipping up. Let it ease off a little bit and just hold this sort of at about 30 or 40%. So we've got a, a kind of vacuum that's coming into play. Okay, and then release, just give yourself a shake. And on the next one, we're going to exhale, we're going to tighten our belt and we're going to zip up at the same time and we're going to float up onto the balls of the feet and we're here okay now if you can't come onto the balls of your feet don't worry just stay on your feet and but avoid sticking your bum out okay so we want to have uh, we want to be zipped up we want to be zipped up really engaged imagine you're holding onto an overhead bar and then gently lower your heels but keep your arms high so we're creating height and space and length and then circle the arms round just give those shoulders a roll and roll them the other way and we're going to do that again so we're going to inhale as we exhale activate your powerhouse muscles your pilates your core muscles here reaching up okay now i'm going to give you the option to close your eyes if you want to just um, be careful okay and then flutter them open and then gently release and we're going to swoosh the arms down swoosh reach up for one and two, swoosh, reach up, and then a final one, swoosh, and reach up, and then just circle the arms behind you, and come back down onto your heels, lovely, shrug, release the shoulders, shrug, release, shrug, release, good, so uh, we're going to come down onto the floor, I'm just going to re-angle my, okay, so we're on the floor, And we'll start off in, in this position. And actually, we could use our pressing gown cord for this. Okay, so we're going to roll down. So just make sure you're not kind of cutting your circulation off. So you can use your cord and then we can just roll down. Obviously, if you've got a band, you can use your band. Okay, and it's nice. It just gives us a little bit of an assist as we come down. And then we're going to bend our knees, have our feet flat on the floor and have your arms in a cactus position if you can manage it, okay? So what's quite nice about this cactus arm position is it we get a stretch for the pecs, okay? Because we can get quite tight in the pectorals. So uh, from here, we're just going to windscreen wipe the legs from side to side. So we're opening and closing the hip socket just lubricating those hip bones a little bit and then come back okay so now we're going to the knees are going to go out to their own side so your right knee will go to the right your left knee will go to the left and as you exhale draw those legs back again feel these abdominals coming into play as you do it okay so they might not automatically trigger but we want to get them to trigger so if you just imagine someone's poking you in the stomach. If you can manage it, your spine is in neutral. Also think about as your knees open, can you get your bum muscles? So just sort of activate a few muscles around your hips. Okay, and then we finish that one off and we tuck the knees in and we have a rock from side to side. And then you're gonna bring your legs into this position. So into the tabletop position. And now we can use our tea towel or dressing gown cord. Maybe I'll use the dressing gown cord. Okay, and you can uh, fold it into two in the dressing gown cord. So we want a little bit of tension. And the arms are up and overhead like so. So from here, we're going to imprint our spine. So we want length between the tail and the crown of the head. So we don't want to be all kind of scrunched. And you'll notice if you scrunch, the cord will go saggy. So we want to keep some tension. If the cord's going saggy, it indicates that something within us has gone a little bit saggy, okay? So we're here. And then we're going to toe tap. Now the angle behind my knee is fixed. And then exhale as you bring that leg back. And then the other side. 
And your range, well, you know this, um, your range depends on you. So if you're really strong, you might be able to get your foot to the floor. And if your back is a bit tweaky, you might be um, more in a sort of, uh, just a very small range, okay? So you, your body will solve the problem for you, basically. There's no absolutes in this. There's no, you have to get your foot to the floor. You don't at all, of course. Okay, now if it's too much with your arms up in the air, you can have your arms down by your side and use them as brakes. And this will give you a little bit more assist. You can also place your um, pelvis in a wedge that you've created with your hands. So there's a number of things that we can do to kind of make it a bit uh, more, uh, mod modify it, yeah, or make it a bit more stable. Okay, we'll just finish that one off. And then we tuck the knees into the chest. So with any of these moves, if they're not feeling right, just kind of take an element out and then just kind of break it down a little bit. So uh, we're going to take a full body stretch. And then we're going to use the T-tail for the next one. And it's quite nice with the T-tail because it means we can't be too uh, wide. So we want to have the grip about shoulder width apart. If you've got broad shoulders, about shoulder width apart. And if you've got sort of like normal uh, width shoulders, maybe a tiny bit wider than shoulder width apart, okay? And we want to get a nice purchase. I'm using the tea towel now. I want to get a nice purchase. But we don't want to grip like with the death grip and we don't want to um, be hinging the wrist back. So you want a smooth wrist and an appropriate grip. And we're fully stretched out and our arms are in Frankenstein's monster. And as you exhale, you're going to strongly flex your feet and you're going to curl up head, neck and shoulders off the floor. Look at your feet, they shouldn't be like that. A strong flex in the feet, you'll feel the core working. There's a little bit of tension in the band or the tea towel and then come back and release the feet. And then as you exhale, we're curling up again. This is your exhale. We're not here by the way, we're not here. Okay, we're here and then Inhale as you release back. Now your option now is you can just do that, okay? Or if you want to, without lifting your legs off the floor, keep going, keep going, keep going. It depends on uh, your mechanics. It depends on how your back is. Lots of depends here. And then you roll back down again. It depends on your structure. If you pick up top, this is an awful lot harder than if you're lighter in your top half of your body because of the physics of it. Okay, so there's all sorts of depends here. And then finish that one off. So we have one more go and you can either just hold it here or roll all the way up. Don't let your feet fly off the floor because that your back's not protected if that happens. Okay, and then release. And now the arms are going to come overhead. Now, arms are overhead and tuck your knees in and just notice how are your ribs? Are they popping out? OK, and if they are because you're having a stretch, they probably are. We're going to draw them back in. OK, so now if you're not uh, sure about that, put, just release one hand for a sec and pop it on your abdominals, sort of where your abs meet your ribs and then cough <laughs> and you'll feel the muscles kind of bouncing underneath. And this is the strong unit that we want to support the move. Now your, arm, your arms might not even be on the floor, they might need to be off the floor and try to avoid buckling, okay? So we're here. And then from this position, we're going to press ourselves up into a bridge as you bring the arms up and over. And just let the tea towel just kind of make contact with your thighs ever so lightly, just sort of hovering on top of the thighs and if there's a gap sort of between one thigh and the tea towel, it just means that something's gone a little bit wonky. So we can sort of, it's good information, it's good feedback. We can correct that. And then we come back down again. And then we come back up again. So we've got our glutes are working, but we don't want our, our glutes, our bum muscles really scrunching. We want them lightly engaged, 
tops of the thighs into the glutes, lightly engaged, pelvic floor, lightly engaged. Okay, now if that, do that again, but if you find in uh, that the bridge is just a bit too much, you can just do the arms only, okay? And maybe a tilt, you can put in a little pelvic tilt, maybe a tiny lift of the bum, just to kind of start to activate the muscles without putting the big load through it. Okay, we don't need to clench our bum cheeks. We don't want a big clench. Okay, and then we'll just finish that one off. Circle the arms round. Bring your knees up into this position. Or if you prefer, you can have your feet on the floor for the next one, okay? And we're gonna do a uh, some spinal twist. So the legs are glued together. We don't want the legs falling apart, okay? We wanna glue them together. Uh, and if you've got, <laughs> just gonna grab my block. Um, if you've got a thing like a block, you can put it in between your thighs and that just stops the legs from wafting apart, okay? But if you haven't, just keep an eye on it. You don't want any separation here. The legs are glued together. And then our arms are like this. And we're going to hover the knees over to one side. Our shoulders aren't scrunched. Our shoulders are broad and strong, but they're not tense. Okay, you exhale as you bring the knees back. And then you inhale as the knees go over to the other side. So your knees are going one way and the shoulder on the opposite side should be on the floor and you're trying to draw your ribs back to the floor to create active uh, torsion. We want it to feel active. I'll show you what this movement isn't. It's not that. It's not that. OK, because this is it's a thing. It's just it's a different thing. OK, we're keeping it um, a bit more contained, but really powerful. Lovely. And also remember, you can put your feet on the floor if you need it to be a little bit gentler. OK, and we come back to centre and then we'll take a full body stretch. Whew. Full body yawn. OK, so we're going to grab hold of the dressing gown cord now. And we're going to do some leg circles and we do uh, leg circles quite a lot. It's a, it's a classic Pilates move and it's quite nice uh, to use a cord or a band because what that does is it just enables us to open out a little bit more and just get a bit more range around the hip socket. But at the same time, we still want to keep this as a strong core centric movement. So we, we don't want to just go <laughs> and just kind of uh, let go completely. We want to use the muscles, but we have got an assist from the cord and it will allow us just to get into a bit more range of motion. And with your still leg, you can have it bent with your foot on the floor. If you're a bit stronger, a bit more experienced, you can straighten the leg, flex the foot and press that leg right in. OK, anchor, anchor through that leg. And then we're going to circle. We're going to do five circles. Let's do five circles two, three, and you can be experimental with this. You can start very small and then make them bigger and bigger. And we'll do one more that way. Okay, now I've got tight hamstrings, which means my leg needs to bend a little bit when it comes close to me. So acknowledge what's happening and respond accordingly. Just listen to what your body is telling you in the moment. So you don't need to go in with a load of um, expectation. <laughs> you know, your body will uh, tell you what it's feeling and you can just respond appropriately. If it's saying bend the knee, bend the knee, that's all you need to know. You can do the analysis at your leisure later. OK, so uh, we're going to swap it over. So the still leg is either bent now, if it is bent, watch it's not flopping, OK, because sometimes we move one leg in one direction, the other leg will flop over and sort of as a counter move, OK? So it's either bent but ahead of you or it's straight and still ahead of you and dig the heel in and, and make that leg strong, OK? And we're going to do five circles. One, two, I've got a clunky hip flexor on that side. 
so you might notice a few scrunches and crunches okay which is fine that's normal but you don't want to be feeling any pain okay pain is a signal we change direction for five four and this is great for get oiling the joints so the synovial fluid in the hip socket we give it a chance to kind of get going and lubricate the hip socket we get a good full coverage when we're doing these movements okay that was five so in our everyday sort of walking and whatever we do it's usually forwards backwards repetitive forwards backwards or sitting in a chair whereas this kind of really gets the full coverage oiling the joints very nice for us okay so uh, we're going to come onto our hands and knees and you can just maneuver yourself into your hands and knees or if you're feeling energetic you can go for a roll onto your hands and knees and then we're here and we'll just start off with a couple of cat cows so we're inhaling and then we're exhaling and as you're in the this is the cat stretch where you're arching your upper back towards the back and you're sucking your belly in and this is the cow stretch head up tail up be careful with this one that you don't collapse into your lower back and sort of create a V. We don't want this sort of sharp angle. We want a smooth curve. And then we're here. And also think about uh, what's going on behind your neck. We don't want any sort of neck wrinkles. Length. Okay, and then we're here. So we're on our hands and knees. And we're going to extend the left leg. And we'll just hover forwards and backwards a few times. Give our calf a little stretch. And then we hold it here and the right arm comes up we're opening out the chest we're mobilizing the mid back and then we scoop through thread the needle and there we go now we can do this on hands and knees if you prefer okay so we can always do that okay and then we're here and we're going to swap it over so you're extending the other leg and we're just forwards and backwards, a little hover, just to stretch out the calf. Nice and gently does it. You can add in a few swirls and circles, change your foot position. Okay, I'm going to pivot round so you can see me. So it's your right leg that's extended and then the left arm opens out. And then as you exhale, scoop through. So mobility around the ribcage area, the thoracic area, it, it kind of... It's one of the first things that we lose as we age. Okay, so keeping this area nice and mobile is really beneficial. It's really beneficial with our overall mobility, but also for our airways. Okay, it keeps the sort of airways open. We don't want to close in in that chest area. Okay, and we're here. And then you're going to sit back on your heels. We'll take a nice stretch. And then we're going to float forwards onto into the prone position. So we're going to lie on our fronts. So just make your way onto your front here. And we're going to have our arms down by our side. Okay, so arms are down by your side and we're going to zap the legs together. So have your, if you can have your legs together, it's not possible for everybody. Okay, but do what you can. And we're going to zip up. So really Create that vacuum in the belly, engage your abdominals, engage your pelvic floor. And as we exhale, we're lengthening and hovering the upper body. And the arms are rising and rotating, so the palms are facing each other. And this is your position. Keep your feet firmly on the floor and then release back down with control. And we'll do it again. So one way with the fingertips, the other way with the crown, and then release. And we'll do one more. If you're finding that a bit too much, here's an alternative for you. Okay, keep the forearms on the floor. This is a nice alternative. Because we've got to be careful of the lower back here. You'll feel it. We don't want to overuse these lower back muscles, and it's difficult because they often get very overused. So when we come to do a move like this, these muscles really want to do all the work and they don't give the other muscles a chance. And that, that's, we want to give those other muscles a chance. 
Okay, we want to sort of retrain. It's like neuro, very neurological. So we're here, we're sitting back on our heels, and then we're going to, nice long child's pose here. So we're going to pick up the right hand. You're going to place it on top of your left. Now, if your bum doesn't get to your uh, back to your heels, don't worry, you can just be up in the air. And just whilst you're stretching, I'll show you what else you can do. You can get a cushion. You can get a really thick cushion. It depends on your mobility. So if you need a big cushion, you can put a big cushion there so that your bum can kind of rest on your heels. Okay, we're going to go to the other side. Nice, okay, and then we're coming back to centre. We're going to kneel, and then you're just going to move your bum over to one side and swish your legs around. And then we'll take a shuffle to the bottom of the mat. Here comes the dressing gown cord again. So uh, you can hook it around your feet. And then we're rolling down. And vertebra by vertebra by vertebra by vertebra. Okay. And then we're just going to have it around one foot. So with this one, we're stretching out the hamstring dynamically. So we're going to bend the knee and then straighten the leg. And you're bending the knee. And as you straighten the leg, feel your, trigger your core muscles. Okay, trigger those core muscles. So we're getting a nice stretch for the hamstring. It's dynamic because we're moving in and out of it. Which is nice if, you, if you're particularly tight, we're less likely to overstretch if we keep this movement in. But also keep that relationship between your core and your leg action. Okay, and now we're here. I'm just going to take this away. We're going to point and flex. Point and flex the foot. And when you point, you can release a little bit. And when you flex, feel these abs. Three two and one shake it shake it shake it we'll do the other side so we bend the leg we straighten we bend we straighten we bend we straighten and we'll just do that a few more times some people prefer to do it this way some people might prefer to do it this way but we don't want to um, hold behind the knee Okay, and then we're here. Okay, and then we're going to flex and point the foot. Flex, feel your core, point. And as you're flexing, um, sometimes what will happen is where, you know, when everything's engaged, this happens in the neck. So a nice thing to do, of course, as always, is just to pop your head on whatever support it needs. And that's just something that you can do. Uh, it's universal. It's not just for this specific move. It's for basically for life, because your neck prefers to be in that position. Okay, and here we are. Good, shake it out, shake it out. Tuck in, we'll roll to our side and ease ourselves up nice and gently into a sitting position. Okay, I have tight hips, so I'm gonna sit on my block. You could use a cookbook or uh, anything that you've got that could do the job. Okay, and then we're just gonna hold our knees Cradle lock, kneecaps, and we're going to go for a few swirls in one direction. And then swap the cross of your legs. Now, if this isn't possible, find an alternative. Okay, and then we swirl in the other direction. Okay, and we're sitting nice and tall. And the priority with this is that our spine is long, so we want to have the axis the axis is our spine, it's long, we're not slouched. Because if, if we are slouched, what we're doing is we're building muscles to support poor posture, okay? So we want to do the opposite, we want to support good posture, okay? And then we're here, we're spreading our wings, palms together, give yourselves a clap. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I've lost count of how many Silverfoot videos I've done. It must be well over 20 by now, I would have thought. So I hope you're enjoying them. I hope you're staying fit and um, healthy and happy. And I look forward to seeing you at some point, hopefully quite soon. Okay, take care, everyone. Bye.